Very excited today. Today is finally the day that I get interactive Julia. I can finally show you how to use notebooks in Julia, how to uh, print code and execute on the same time. And if you're familiar with Jupyter, that's what I'm aiming to get going. Originally, I hesitated on doing this because the Anaconda install was just too difficult, but I found a way to do it without Anaconda. So I'm gonna get interactive Julia on my computer in this video and show you the steps to do it as well. I share videos like this where I learn new things about Julia all the time. So hit the subscribe button if you wanna learn along with me uh, and hopefully you don't make the same mistakes that I do. So the first thing that we do is open up the package mode by pressing the open square bracket. And then what we do next is type in simply add iJulia. Now that adds the iJulia package or interactive Julia package. If you're familiar with iPython or Jupyter Notebooks, then hopefully this is uh, something similar for you. So I'll come back in a second when that's installed. So I've been doing a bit of research in the Julia background uh, while we're waiting for this to install. And I found it interesting that uh, one of the founders of Julia, one of the originators of Julia said that Julia allows humans to talk to humans about their intent on the computer which means that Julia programming should sound more like a human language, I guess, rather than like a computer language uh, and also be explicit with the computer. So I've noticed some of these things as well that uh, it, as someone with a mathematical background, it feels very familiar using Julia. I was, I was never a fan of MATLAB at, at university, but using Julia does feel quite familiar uh, and, and friendly coming from uh, mostly an engineering MATLAB, JavaScript, Python background. Uh, so I'm learning Julia to get it ready for data analysis. I want to do some data analysis work with Julia. I want to see if it can be used as a general purpose language, maybe write some programs uh, and share along these lessons with, with everyone out there on YouTube so that hopefully uh, you learn along with me or, or I had a comment on the last video that uh, helped me out that uh, I'm learning as well. So please, if you have any comments, if you see anything that I'm making a mistake on or that you think I can do better, please leave a comment below and I'll see if I can pick that up in the next video. Uh, one of the early criticisms I've noticed of Julia is that uh, sometimes adding packages can take a bit long, uh, particularly when there is this package registry that's installed on your computer. Oh, hi, my name's Chris, by the way. Uh, so especially when there's this uh, registry already installed on your computer, it can take a while to, to download and install new packages. I've seen uh, whole programs be downloaded quicker than this. So, but that said, uh, Julia is new and is growing. It's only been around for a few years, um, nine I think, which is quite young in terms of computer languages. Uh, so I'm, I'm hoping to learn it and, and share my experiences with everyone out there on YouTube. It looks like it's nearly finished. So we'll, I'll give you a brief overview of what we're gonna do next. So after adding the iJulia package, we simply start the interactive notebook session and that'll allow us to uh, use Julia in a web browser, or use the uh, interactive Julia in a web browser, which should allow us to put together uh, a notebook style uh, text and code all, all in one file. And then my other aim for this video is to save that and put it to, uh, save and load those files so that you can use it, actually use it in, in work that you're doing with Julia. So uh, some, a lot of the things I'm trying to do with this channel are aimed at helping everyone produce things with Julia helping people produce things with Julia, because that's ultimately where I want to go. Uh, so if you check out my last video, I did, um, uh, I used Julia as a tool to produce high DPI plots that are ready for use in journals and publications. So, but that aside, uh, it looks like Julia's finished installing the package there. So we'll exit package mode. Okay, and go back to the Julia prompt. And from this, okay, once we're back at the prompt, we simply type using iJulia, which will, I guess it activates the package in the Julia prompt. Now, the first time you run a package, like this is the first time I'm using the iJulia package, it will go through this pre-compiling process. This, this takes a while as well. I found it can be a bit slow again, yeah, getting packages up and running in Julia, but by doing this pre-compiling process, I believe it saves time later on, that Julia is then able to call the function inside the package quite quickly once it's pre-compiled. Uh, so then after we, uh, pre-compile this iJulia after it's activated in the RAPL, we can start the notebook uh, and then that will allow us to use a web browser to interact with Julia. It looks like Julia's finished pre-compiling the iJulia package there. So the next thing to do is to type in notebook, press enter, and hopefully that should start the notebook. So it's been quite a few 
uh, install Ju Jupyter by Conda. Yes, so the first time you run it, it's going to install. Uh, what running the notebook function like this does is set up its own uh, Jupyter installation inside Julia managed by the iJulia package. And so it does this via a package called Conda. So yes, we're going to install that. Uh, this is an alternative to Anaconda that I like the look of because I found that uh, activating Julia inside Anaconda, the, the activating Julia for Jupyter inside Anaconda meant downloading a lot of Python packages and managing a separate Python install on my computer. This is a clean development machine for me. The only languages I have set up on this computer are JavaScript and Julia. I wasn't keen to put Python on it as well. The more languages you have installed on a computer, I find the slower it gets. That's what happened to my last one anyway. So this computer, I want to keep clean, simple, uh, and you might notice the video stutter every now and then as the computer is struggling to keep up with recording this and with uh, running some of the Julia packages. So what it's doing now is installing uh, Conda to manage uh, Jupyter. And I'll get back to you when it's done. It looks like it's installing a lot of dependent packages, packages that depend on, on the uh, packages that my uh, iJulia depends on to run this uh, notebook. Uh, now, I believe it is installing a miniature Python install managed by iJulia. Now, that's okay because at the end of the day, it's all contained within my Julia part of this computer. It's not uh, a separate Python install that I have to manage and then hook up Julia to. I found from what I've read and what I've researched, this seems to be quite an easy way to get Python, uh, to get Julia going, uh, iJulia going on this computer. So I'm hoping that this provides a, uh, a decent Jupyter experience that we can get something out of it. So what I want to do uh, in this video with Jupyter today is to uh, write a notebook, save a notebook, and hopefully print a notebook as well. I'm going to see if we can do the print too. Uh, if you notice the video cut off, you'll know that I didn't manage to get that printing done. Let me know down in the comments if you get any errors that come along while you do this. It seems to have been a smooth install for me so far, but I did have a bit of problems when I first installed Julia and it threw out quite a lot of errors at me. So uh, check out that video if you're interested in what those errors are. But if you get any in this process, please leave a comment below. I'll take a look at, see what I can do to help you out, see if there's anything I can contribute there and hopefully fix those errors up with you. Okay, one thing that I missed there, uh, I flicked off to look at my web browser while I was while it was all installing in the background and suddenly it redirects me to Julia. Uh, so what I've done is I actually use a different web browser for these. So I keep all my personal tabs open in Firefox, but I've been using uh, Internet Explorer Edge of all things to, to look at uh, everything related to Julia. So what I've done is I've copied the address that it gave me. Yeah, you can see here local host. Uh, yeah, I've copied the address that it gave me originally. So we've gone to uh, Jupyter. Ah, okay. What's going on here? So let's see. Uh, what are we What are we looking at? So are we back at the prompt? No. So I can't bring up a prompt at the moment. Uh, but it looks like if no password has been configured, you need to open the notebook server with its login token in the URL or paste it above. This requirement will be lifted if you enable a password. The command Jupyter Notebook List will show you the URLs of running servers with their tokens, which you can copy and paste into your browser, for example, etc. Or you can just paste the token value into the password field on this page. See the documentation on how to enable a password in place of token authentication if you like to involve, avoid dealing with random tokens. So it looks like there's some security thing there because it is, I believe it's because it is exposing a web browser, uh, a web server that you're then connecting to in your web browser. And it all makes sure that you're the person who's actually running Jupyter. So I'm okay using this uh, token system when it when it does finally come up. Uh, this is an interesting thing. It looks, it looks like it's posted all of my environment variables here. So you can see everything that's on my computer. My name's Chris. Uh, and you can see lots of interesting details about my computer here, but uh, I don't know where my Julia prompt has gone. So it won't give me this uh, token. Let's, what happens if I just click login, invalid credentials. Okay, set up a password. Uh, so how do I type in this Jupyter notebook list? I'll do a bit of research and I'll get back to you. So after a lot of hunting, I found out the problem was that uh, Jupyter was being was sending a token to my web browser to allow me to log in, so without this password or token, but it only sent the token to the default browser on my computer when I ran Notebook. So in my case, 
that's uh, Firefox rather than Edge. So whichever browser Jupyter Julia, iJulia sends a token to is the browser you should be using. I haven't figured out how to change the password yet. It seems to be quite complicated and involved beyond the scope of this video. Let me know in the comments if you'd like the links to the description as I found on, on why this happens, on what these tokens mean, or if you want to know how to change that password or how to disable security altogether. Uh, I did a bit of research and got some links for that. So leave a comment below and I'll, I'll send you those links. Uh, so I've got Jupyter up here running now. What I might do is go back and show you one little trick uh, back in the REPL first. I'll show you one little trick here that Julia uh, isn't usable while you've got the Jupyter Notebook running unless you say to it, detached equals true. Now hopefully that means that yes, our Julia prompt comes back so we can do A equals one, our answer is there. But at the same time, we should be able to use our uh, our Jupyter Notebook here. So what it's done is it's just incremented the, this this number in the address, and it's given me uh, the Jupyter that I can I can start using. So let's create a new file. We're going to use yes Julia. That's what we want to use. We want to create a new Julia workbook, and we're going to do a quick uh, print line hello world. So I believe. We just simply do print line hello world and hit run. Where is it coming out? I haven't actually used Jupyter before. <laughs> All the Python programming I did was on web framework. So I've, I've only used Jupyter once or twice in the past and you'll have to forgive me if I'm new to the whole thing. Let's see, where can we print? Excellent. So it took a second there for the output to come out here but it does look like it worked. Let's try that again, see, uh, and I won't cut the video this time so you can see how long it takes. Hello world. And so we've selected cell two, so we'll run that, and excellent, straight away. Uh, I believe it was initializing the Julia kernel. So the first time you run some of the commands in the notebook, it might take a while for Julia to start up. That same problem I was having in the REPL. Uh, this is just a laptop, and it's certainly not underpowered. Uh, so I'm surprised Julia takes so long to execute some of these things, but it is just the first time you run it. Every subsequent time, it's very fast and responsive. Okay, what else can we do with this? We want to, how can we add some text? Um, ah, okay, there we go. So I've changed the block. Uh, let's say this is a Julia test. And we'll go to the next block. Does that... Does that render the markdown? Don't know. Ah, yes, okay, that does render the markdown. Now, how do we, can we go back and edit it? Oh, yes, okay. Run, yeah, oh, good, look. Uh, this is my first time using Notebook. It's quite, uh, it's quite good. I, I like this system. I'm going to use it in future videos to show the commands that I'm using so that we don't always have to rely on this REPL, which was, um, uh, it's nice for a change every now and then. The next thing I want to do is uh, save and load the notebook. And hopefully in the future, I'll be able to set up the notebooks to make the videos a bit uh, more responsive so I can share these notebooks with you afterwards and you can see how the commands work through them. So uh, there's a save button over here. I don't know where that's saved to. Uh, let's, let's try save as and see where it saves to. Relative to the notebook directory, okay. Uh, so it's asking for a whole path here, which means I can use uh, folder commands like that. But what I'm going to do is just call it first notebook, hit save. Now if we close this, uh, okay, I think it's closing. Yes, okay, good. Uh, and it's put me back here at this, um, where we started. I, I'm not too sure which folder this is. It looks like one of my uh, C uses Chris folder. Uh, so that I'm using Windows for this. So C uses Chris, uh, Chris is my name and my username on this computer. Looks like where it started. But it does have this first notebook here. So we'll open that up again. And good, so we can save, we can save and load a notebook. Is there any print option? Download as uh, PDF. I did notice that LaTeX was one of the packages that installed, so, oh no, okay. Uh, it looks like LaTeX was installed. Pandoc was one of the packages installed. Uh, so I don't have LaTeX installed on this computer, which means I can't do that. 
What about if we do print preview? Can I print? I wonder if I can print from here as a PDF and see what happens. Um, okay, save the PDF. Uh, Julia. I've just saved it to my uh, videos folder because that was the last one I had open when I was editing the last video. Okay. Uh, where's that gone? So I open up here. This is what you get when you print a PDF. It does still contain the details that Firefox included on the PDF, but it looks quite good otherwise. Uh, this is what happens when I went to print preview and then uh, printed the uh, preview as PDF. I don't have LaTeX or, or Tech installed on this computer, so I can't use the uh, print to PDF via LaTeX. Uh, what it gives me an option to print to slides. I might try that. So it looks like the print to PDF worked. Uh, I had to go print preview and then print the previews of PDF to get this. Unfortunately, it did include this information at the top. Uh, actually, that might be a Firefox problem. So let me see if I can fix that. It looks like the only way I could print without installing LaTeX on this computer was to uh, use this print preview button, open it up as a print preview, and then print that using Microsoft PDF printer. Open up the PDF, and this is what I get. It does include this detail at the top here. Uh, I think that's a problem with Firefox, so there might be a way I can disable it. But it does give you this print, print, nice printed PDF of our notebook. Uh, the other alternative I liked was uh, Slides uh, Reveal.js, which seemed to give me a nice uh, HTML friendly printed version, which uh, I am a fan of JavaScript, so I, I, like, I like the way this is set up with Reveal. Uh, but that seems to be uh, the basics of how to use Jupyter. We can put some code in, we can execute some code, uh, we can save the notebook, we can load the notebook, and we can print everything as well. Uh, including all this markdown text and extra things that we put in. Uh, so I'm relatively new to Julia uh, and Jupyter, as you can tell. Uh, I'm learning as I go. And if you have any feedback or comments, please leave them down below and I'll get back to you. Hit subscribe. If there's enough comments on or queries on the same topic, I'll try to make a video on that in the future. And hopefully I'll see you there. So I'm relatively new to Julia uh, and Jupiter, as you can tell. Uh, I'm learning as I go. And if you have any feedback or comments, please leave them down below and I'll get back to you. Hit subscribe. If there's enough comments on or queries on the same topic, I'll try to make a video on that in the future. And hopefully I'll see you there.